Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here from West Shore. Welcome to our daily devotion and prayer time. We are continuing in the book of Titus. We started Titus yesterday. This is Paul's letter to um, one of his protégés, Titus. And we pick up in verse five today as Paul is addressing the work of Titus on the island of Crete as he uh, started the church and was trying to get the church off the ground and set up some standards and some things that the church needed in order to be effective. So this is what he says beginning in verse five. I left you on the island of Crete so you could complete our work there and appoint elders in each town as I instructed you. So, so the work of Titus, his responsibility was to take what Paul had started and go from town to town, set up the leadership in the church so that it would be effective in its ministry. And then he gives, he gives them instructions to what these elders or leaders within the church should be. He says, an elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife and his children must be believers who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. A church leader is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home and he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. So that takes us through verse nine. And I wanna start with verse nine and kind of work backwards because verse nine gives us the why of what Paul has just said. Um, he says that a leader is supposed to have these qualifications so that he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. He says that in order for this, these elders, these church leaders to be effective in their ministry, they must have certain standards in their life because the ultimate goal is to build the church up by teaching and by encouraging and by correcting those within the church. Now, some would look at this and say, well, th these are really some strict legalistic uh, characteristics or standards that Paul is laying out. That may be true. The question is why? I'm convinced that it's, it's that way, not because God is looking for perfection within leaders in the church, because we know that we are all fallen we all have fallen short of god's standard and that's why we need a savior that's why we need jesus but he is saying by setting up these standards that the the mission of the church is so vitally important that its leaders must be held to a higher standard now i know in our culture we 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 are really against holding people to a higher standard but remember our culture is not what god is teaching is not what he wants us to be he wants us to be something different and and so he says that the leaders of my church must have these qualifications now in practical terms and in a pragmatic sense, what does that mean for us as followers of Jesus Christ? 
it must it means that we must take seriously and be very careful with the people that we select to be in leadership in our churches in our ministries in our our families of faith we need to make sure that those who are leading others are themselves in line with what god's standards are that way as paul said it in verse 9 so that the church can be effective in what it's it's been called to do this is not an easy topic this is not something that that we should look at lightly it's something that we should consider seriously and as we do the message of the gospel will be proclaimed and will move forward and the church will be what god has intended it to be let's pray father thank you for calling us thank you for um, allowing the church to be your hands and feet in this world father help us to have a renewed sense of the importance of the ministry of the church help us to give it our all to allow you to work through us and father help us to to live lives that are worthy of our calling and live lives that would make an impact in the world in which we live and we thank you that that can only be done through the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, have a terrific Thursday. And until next time, as always, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. And may you fall just a little bit deeper in love with Jesus today. Take care. May God bless you.